Okay, we have a RC circuit problem and it looks like this. We have a capacitor that is uncharged at first and at T equals zero, we're gonna close the switch. Okay, I put the description of the video below the video in the comment. So if you wanna pause the video, write it down, go ahead. So the first uh, part is gonna ask us to write down Kirchhoff's junction rule and loop rule. So let's start with the junction rule. We're gonna mark I1, I2, and I3 as the description of the problem asks us. I1 is through R1, I2 is through R2, and I3 is to the EMF. We're gonna pick these directions, and these directions are totally just a guess it's just we know the e m f goes through negative to positive so we know this direction for sure but these two we're gonna if the circuit would be more complicated sometimes you cannot figure out what way is it going what's happening so don't obsess too much about it just make sure that you have something going in and something going out of a junction. And here we, we're gonna guess this way and this way. If you guess wrong, like we would say I1 would go this way, the only difference would you get is that when you calculate I1, you will get a negative value instead of a positive one. If you get a negative value, you know that you guessed the direction wrong, and that's all the difference. So if you have a complicated circuit, don't worry about it. Do your best to guess the right way, but if you didn't, all well, difference is you will get a negative value when you figure out I. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and write down the junction rule. We're gonna use this junction. I3 is going in, so we're gonna write I3 equals I1 and I2 coming out. So we're gonna put I1 plus I2 on this side. We could also use this junction, it would give us the equation the same way, except we could put I1 and I2 going in on this side equals I3 going out on this side. Alright, let's uh, do the loop rules now. Work with, we can, let's use it clockwise, then we can use the left side and the right side separately. So, left side loop, right side loop. And we can both use them, use both of them uh, clockwise. There you go, we have three loops available for us to write equations on and work with. Okay, let's see the outer loop. Let's write up the equation for the outer loop. We're gonna start at point A and go A, B, C, D, E, F, and back to A. So the outer part. We're gonna call this, let's see, equation one. We're gonna have plus our EMF. As we keep going, we're gonna get to our resistor one, which will be minus the voltage drop across R1, but we're gonna break it down and write it as I1 times R1. Keep going, voltage drop across, across the capacitor, we see, and nothing here, nothing here, we're back to the starting point, so equals zero. Now let's use another loop, loop two, we're gonna call this loop two. Okay, let's use, let's say, the right side loop. So, okay, let's do our right side loop. We're gonna use this side. Let's start at point C. We're gonna go clockwise, like we said. So, first item, R1, voltage drop across R1. Negative, I1, R1, keep going negative minus 
voltage drop across the capacitor keep going coming back this way now here we can see the current is coming this way but we are going this way so we're gonna write plus i2 r2 equals zero because we're back to we're back to point c okay now let's do the left side loop we're going clockwise we're gonna call this equation number three let's start with the emf which is plus emf there you go keep going nothing here we have r2 so voltage drop on r2 i2 minus r2 equals zero there's nothing else left just these two items in this equation and we can call the junction rule let's say our equation number four these will help us find other values in the following steps okay let's do current number one two and three at t equals zero we know that our capacitor was on charge so it has no charge on it meaning vc will be also zero this is useful because you can use equation one and all we're gonna have left in it since this part goes to zero emf minus i1 r1 and from there we can solve for i1 so from equation one plus 12.0 volt equal i'm gonna put the i r on the other side equals i1 r1 now we're gonna solve for i1 equals 12 volts divided by 10 ohms the values for the resistors are given and this will give us 1.20 amps there you go we have a positive value so that means we guess the direction of the current right okay let's look for current number two the easiest equation to find current number two will be in equation number three so let's use that one equation number three from here we know emf we know the r2 we can solve for i2 i'm going to go ahead and solve for it straight i2 equals 12.0 volts divided by 20 ohms value given equals 0 0.600 amps this is our value for current number two okay we have i3 i3 actually we can use the junction rule our equation number four i3 equals i1 plus i2 1.20 amps plus 0 0.600 amps and this will give us 1.880 amps 1.80 amps there you go that's part b okay for our part c find the current through resistor one at 0 0.5 seconds after the switch was closed our capacitor is charging at this point and we're gonna use this equation to calculate it our i naught here will be the current that we found in part b down here for our current 1.2 amps this is the one that we're working with this is the one that's going through here all right i'm gonna go ahead and plug in straight 1.20 amps times e on the negative t on top that's our 0 0.500 seconds divided by rc our r is 10 ohms 
times our capacitance is 0 0.100 farads and this will give us a value of 0 0.728 amps okay part D current through R1 same item but at time infinite a long time after the switch was closed so a long time after the switch was closed our capacitor is fully charged therefore I on the capacitor will be zero when the capacitor is full there's no more current flowing through it I on the capacitor is in series with I on the R1 therefore the current will be the same so I on R1 will be also zero amps okay part E we open the switch and we need to draw a new circuit and they want us to find the current in it so since we open this switch the battery and this side of the circuit is pretty much gone there is nothing happening there so we, our circuit that we're gonna draw is gonna be like this pretty much the right side of the equation this is our R1 this is R2 and our capacitor now when the capacitor was charging the current was coming this way and it's important to notice that the when it went through the resistor this is how the charges were when it got to the capacitor it charged it with plus side this way negative side this way so therefore when we're gonna open the switch and the capacitor is gonna cause the new current to flow it will go this way counterclockwise and this is the current that they want us to find i equals question mark now we're gonna write up a new loop rule and here make sure you take note of this when it was this when it was the capacitor was charging we wrote it as minus voltage drop on the capacitor and here it's gonna be acting as a battery basically so it will be discharging so we will write plus V C and then the rest of the circuit will be minus I or 1 minus I or 2 equals 0 both resistors have the same I going through it I'm gonna solve for it I equals VC R1 plus R2 after we plug in we have 12.0 volts under 30 ohms and this will give us an I equals 0 0.400 amps the last part is asking us to find the current through R1 two seconds after the switch was opened now we're going to use this equation again and I'm going to go ahead and plug in right away I equals I naught and I naught will be the current that we found in part E so 0 0.400 amps times E on the negative two seconds on top divided by RC our R is 30 ohms both of these together times our C which is 0 0.100 farads and this will give us an I that's equal to 0 0.205 amps 